nervous now than I was before. <laughs> All right. I am Doug Frankish. I've been teaching for 12 years, most recently at the American School Foundation of Monterey in Mexico, and this year I'm transitioning between being a classroom teacher and to being a tech integration specialist. Um, one of the things that ASFM does is every year is they develop school-wide goals. Those school-wide goals align with the school mission, they align with the school vision, which is a great thing because it gives us a sense of purpose. Um, recently one of those goals has been to develop 21st century skills for the use of technology, particularly with Creativity, collaboration, communication, and problem solving. Um, along with the, adapt or the adoption of these goals, we also adopt different tools to help us move toward the development of those skills. So everyone in grades 2 to 12 has access to Google Apps. There are 2 to 1 um, pieces of equipment for students to use, so everyone's well supported. A problem that I have is I feel like we're, even though this is a great situation, I feel like I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. We use heavily, we rely heavily on Google Docs. And while it's a great tool, I wanted to expose my students to another tool that we could use collaboratively as a whole. My students, while they're very well traveled, the community is a little bit insular, so in addition, I also wanted to try to add on to that last 21st century skill of trying to open them up to more global citizenship and different cultures. So, not knowing where to turn, I went to my PLN, did some Twitter hashtag searches, um, read some blogs, cont contacted colleagues, and eventually came up with the idea of trying something out called Mystery Skype. If you're not sure what Mystery Skype is, pretty much what's happening is that you're connecting with a classroom in another part of the world. They actually could be in the same city if you don't know who to contact. But what you're doing is you're asking yes or no questions between those classes on a Skype call to try to locate the other class. Um, it's a nice tool to use, it's very simple, and it gives the students ways to develop these skills of collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity, and we're gonna talk about those a little bit later. The first thing that we did when I finally got in contact with the teacher who wanted to do this was we needed to discuss logistics. So something as simple as sharing your Skype name, making sure that the time zones between your classes are going to be working, um, making sure that in your Skype name, you don't have the location of where you are. So when you open that up and it's projected, they're not like, oh, you're in Oakland. Um, so some of those things are things you want to take care of. The roles are something else. We had two students that were in charge of asking and answering the questions formally to the computer or to the other class. There was a group of researchers. There was a group of runners who took information from the researchers to the people who were actually asking these questions. So we set those things up. Communication that helped my students tremendously. They're all ESL learners. So for them to have the chance to speak to native English speakers was a great thing. They could test those things out. They could learn new idioms from hearing the other classes participate. So the communication piece was big for us. Collaboration was key too because I wanted that team experience and I wanted them to build themselves together. And this really, everyone played their role. There wasn't one person who's like, you know, you, we didn't find them because of you. Like it was a collective experience. You also saw students collaborating on the same device. Creativity was huge, and the way that they would use devices, they would use search engines, the way they would phrase questions. Um, they, there were endless opportunities. I learned new search engines from them that I wasn't even sure of. DuckDuckGo was a big one that students came up with. Um, critical thinking skills, they're using deductive thinking skills by starting large. Are you in the northern hemisphere, southern, and then narrowing it down into finding not just the city, but the actual school where these, uh, these other students are attending. They were also developing life skills, um, which would be like you would see natural leaders come out of this. They also had to be flexible thinkers. If they were dead set on knowing that this is the country where these kids are, and then we later found out other information, they had to adapt themselves. So it was interesting to see them create and move in different directions. We did also have documentation of this, so we had kids using today's meets to answer the questions and keep track of the questions that we asked so that we knew that when we went back to this, we could say what were the things that we did well, where could we have changed things to try to allocate them more quickly. This is a quick little clip of our fourth graders in action. So you see little Gabrielle right here, taking a question on a post-it note over to our question askers, <laughs> using her critical thinking skills, and ask that question, we get a response back. Um, we reflected after each of these experiences, so like I said, what, what went well, what could we improve on? Were you the most effective person in your role, or do you think that you could have helped the class by taking on a different role? So reflection was quite key for us. We also talked about taking those skills and applying them into other areas. 
There are other, other uses for Skype. Um, virtual field trips is one. We Skyped on World Read Aloud Day with my mom, who showed us on a January day the backyard full of snow, which was something that kids in Mexico don't get to see very often. So that was a nice touch. Um, so is it the perfect fit? Maybe not, but for right now it's working quite well. And you can see how the development of 21st century skills can be used through the use of technology and history study. Questions? Okay. Uh -huh. um, how often would you do it and how much time would you set aside for an average? We, pra we did it three times throughout the year. We practiced a couple times before our initial site. Uh, the three calls that we took were less than an hour. Um, so it was, I don't know, about, we allowed it like 45 to minutes to an hour. Did you use just like one? computer and just projected on the screen, or did you have all the kids at their own computers? Yeah, we are, my classroom is one-to-one, -one, so we had one that was designated as the formal, this is where the conversation is going to happen, and then other kids were on laptops researching and then went, went back and forth between the two. Oh, okay. So one that was projected, we split the screen, so it was like the visual of the other classes, you know, they need that, yeah. and the other was our today's meet that was going through the questions that they asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you spoke of the benefits and how wonderful it is, but just in terms of the challenges that you found throughout the year, I'm not so sure what age group you had specifically, but we seem quite young. Yeah. And in researching and using those critical thinking skills and working collaboratively, I found myself as a teacher and having experienced a lot of this and having used Skype this year. You know, there are challenges as well that sometimes you kind know, of brush under the carpet because you know, we should really focus on the positive. But just it would be interesting speaking to another teacher. What did you find that may have needed some work throughout the year to sure. help them along the process? Today's meet was a big one. Like huh. using that back channel, there was always like hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> okay, obviously did screenshot that part. But, like, those things like digital citizenship was definitely a big piece of this and like it was the same thing. Kids would have Google Docs open in between, like it was a lot of a lot of training, and it's again, it's not perfect, but it's like the continual conversation about those things as they happen is what we try to do. So it wasn't just like an isolated lesson saying like this is when we're going to talk about this. We would refer back to those moments as much as we could. Um, but you definitely, we would have a firm discussion before we, yeah. we went through that process. But it's still learn. I don't know. This was the first year that I experienced it, and we, I learned very long. Do you feel that towards the end of the year, there's they became more fluid with? The way they were interacting and sure. Yeah. Yeah. They knew which was like the all the first few times. The other class found us first, and that was a pretty big motivator for them to be like, "Okay, we're still together. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can't have our last one. We can't. Lose. It's not that it's win or lose, but you know that's going to happen." Do you plan to continue? Um, next year I won't be in the classroom, but I would. I have a couple people in mind that I don't want to stop doing it because I think, like I said, especially with our our clientele. They're well traveled, but they don't really experience those other cultures. So it's something that I still would like to push among, especially among that grade level. Mm -hmm. um, I teach five six-year-olds, and I've done it quite a bit now this year. But what I do is I bring some older children in to help us, and we assign roles in advance, and everybody knows exactly what their job is on that day. Like it might be looking after the the uh, atlases, or if we have access to Google Maps, that's great. We don't always have that. Uh, I think that part of it is really important that everybody knows what their job is and then we have greeters and we have everybody as I say has their different uh, role. We play a game first of all, rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first to ask yeah. the first question. Mm -hmm. And they love that and it kind of breaks the, the ice and the start of it, you know. Right. But I think assigning the roles in advance and we have different sets of questions then once we discover if they're maybe in America or if they're in Asia or wherever they are, then we kind of branch into questions for that region, you know, that we have set up in advance. So we're you get used to it and you yeah. get more proficient at it the more you do it. Yeah, which is, I think why the reflecting piece was good for us as well. Like, what yeah. roles worked well for you? Yes. It's not easy yeah. for me. Because I'm very kids are better at so. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm good at creating the structure, but when it's time to let them go and kind of do it, I'm like, yeah. 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 Yeah.